afternoon, afternoon, afternoon. All right. This may not excite everybody, but we're going to have a look at this scenario. And uh, one of the first things I wanted to do is have a look at the victory conditions and the approach routes for both forces in GMT's Panzer by Jim Day. And we're looking at, uh, I think most appropriately, because I didn't want to just pull out another D-Day title, uh, we're looking at a scenario that's set around Khan in June 1944, with the premise being that it's somewhat of a meeting engagement to occupy this particular hill here. And the surrounding terrain is relatively flat with some ponds, things like that. And uh, <clears throat> we'll kind of go at it from there. So uh, first things first, let's look at the opposing forces on... I might as well, it's probably easier if we actually just look at it this way. Yeah, here we go. I've been flicking over to the wrong scenario on a regular basis. So we've got the uh, 7th Armored. And basically one, two, three, four squadrons. Or four squads inside a squadron. What is an element of a squadron called? I don't know. Nevertheless, there's an armored squadron here. And uh, that comprises uh, three Cromwell 4s and a Sherman Firefly per group that's boxed together. A couple of Wolverines have been attached. And then there are what amounts to four... Well, there's really two vehicles that are the command vehicles, right? The CHQs. Uh, I'd almost be inclined, just in terms of managing this scenario, making the, the Crom Cromwell 6s the command vehicles versus the, the fours, uh, just for ease of uh, ease of use and, and ability to sort of track which, which unit is which. So we'll probably do that. And opposing them is a Panzer company. Uh, now they're all uh, Panzer 4Hs and uh, there's three Stug 3s. And so I've, I've uh, grouped these together in such a way that it's five panzers per group and then we're going to have a stug attached to each one and that will kind of form the operating the operating functions of that uh, that group right so that's the opposing forces the game is laid out over these three maps map 16 on the left 18 in the middle 19 on the right and the uh, the Brits drew the short straw and rolled lowest for initiative, so they have to set up first. And there's a funky little DRM. Both sides get a twenty uh, plus twenty DRM. That seems kind of silly to me. Uh, why not just roll the dice and just use the the standard result? So we'll be doing that, unless someone can tell me why I should add twenty. To both sides die roll. Uh, so here we go here. So within three hexes of the edge, the British are going to come on and their goal is to capture this hill and make sure there are no enemy units in this area here on the second level for a full turn. So that will be quite a challenge, right? Uh, the the way I look at this is, you know, how, where, how, what are the differenti differentiating, differentiating uh, capabilities of the units? And then how will that affect how we can use them on the map? And how will that drive our tactics to achieve the goal? So if we look at the, the, the standard uh, tanks here, we can see they've got a, a over, over the ground... Uh, movement rate of six, uh, pathways nine, and roads 14. Unfortunately, many of these roads end uh, unceremoniously and then become a path, right? So that's a bit problematic. But the red, the red blocks, red blocks here, represent how far 
the British can get in the first turn, assuming they choose to, they win initiative and or move first. So they can actually get into some relatively decent positions to fire into or, or sorry, fire from here, 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 uh, over here, there's a green dot as well. And all those uh, hexes, they're up a little bit higher. They can shoot onto this hill. They can cover this approach. We can't really cover this approach because of these buildings. Uh, although we might get a longer shot over the top there if there's not too much shadow from, uh, from the way the line of sight works. Great, great shots here, but this is set back quite a ways. And that's when we start looking at uh, the, the comparative differences between the, the vehicles. So we saw that there's a, a 9 and a 14 movement rate on path, paths and roads, but poor old, poor old Jerry here, he's moving 3 uh, across the ground and 5 and 8, so much, much slower. And he's also got some stooks, as I said, and the stooks are a little quicker, actually. They're, uh, they're popping along at uh, four, six, and nine. So there's a maneuverability advantage that's significant to the British. And we will probably have to use that. And I think that means that when the British set up, they will probably spread out a little bit. We'll have to work out what our command span is going to be, and we've got to track morale and all that sort of fun stuff, and I'm going to be using all the advanced rules for command. So I, ideally, I really would like to try and you know come in on this angle here and be able to shoot in this way and approach from the other side of the map and then have uh, one or two parts of that squadron in reserve and see if we can't beat up the Germans at, dis at the distance, at a distance. But that's where... The next aspect of these weapons, the weapons platforms come into play. Excuse me. So I look at the Sherman Firefly on the left hand side and I look at their, well, first of all, the ranges matter. So we can see that short range and medium range are pretty equivalent, uh, eight and seven and 14 and 13. So they're gonna do about, uh, be able to shoot at about the same effectiveness at short and medium range, which is where most of the fighting is gonna happen because uh, trying to get shots off at long range is pretty difficult. Uh, we can see that the penetration rates are relatively the same with, well, really, I guess that's not relatively the same. Uh, 26 and 24 versus 22 and 19, uh, that gives a pretty good edge to the Sherman. We drop down to the defensive values. We can see it turret front 10 versus six, right? On the front here, pretty significant. But relatively speaking, you know, if, if a Sherman penetrates, it's gonna kill you, right? Even, even turret front, sorry, that was turret rear I was pointing to. Uh, hull front, they're both 16, but both of them at medium range have a 19 or a 24 penetration so that's going to we're going to be rolling for damage if that happens if it's uh now if it's over here we can see uh front side or rear side a little little closer 21 and 22 relatively speaking but uh turret side stronger much stronger but once again you know at short range 22 and 19 is the penetration rate now uh so i'm really not going to need apcr at all, unless I want to do some long range shooting because look, at I can do long range with the APCR at 13. Actually, that's not helpful. <laughs> what am I saying? That's worse, uh, so ignore me. Uh, so there's that. Now, so they're the two primary vehicles. Actually, they're not the two primary vehicles. There's only a few of those, and this is the primary vehicle for these guys, but let's look at this Cromwell. There's two types of Cromwell, but we'll focus in on the uh, Cromwell 4. Now we'll see the uh, difference here, uh, 5 versus 7 and 9 versus 13. So medium range ends at 9 here. Sorry, begins at 9 here and rolls through to uh, 
only 13, but 18 here. So significantly different there. So the Panzer IVs can sit off and shoot at the Cromwells. And all of the shots, if they do hit, will penetrate most likely. Look at those uh, armor ratings, 18, 11, 13, and a penetration rate to 22 and 19. So they're gonna, definitely going to get through, just depending on what sort of chance of a kill we'll have, right? Now, the, <clears throat> the Allies do have Wolverines, which have similar ranges, much higher penetration, well, relatively higher penetration rates than the Cromwell, 21 and 19 versus 15, 14, but very similar to the Panzer IV. So what does all that mean? And we've looked at all these charts and numbers and gobbledygook. What that means is that the advantage is going to be, I believe, in this scenario, uh, given to the most mobile of combatants. Those folks that can move the fastest and get in and out of trouble quickly and, and dash to potential protective terrain are the ones that are going to survive the the fight because it's it's almost like if if we can see you we're going to be able to kill you in this in this range if it's in the short to medium range with the only downside being that the cromwells will have to be uh, approximately four or five hexes closer to be uh, equivalently effective uh, in fact they also even if they are at um, so, if you look at their penetration rates, uh, fifteen and fourteen here, right? I don't know if you can see that, okay. I wasn't. I should have been making sure the camera was focused for you. Sorry if it hasn't been. Fifteen and fourteen is the penetration rate with AP, right? Now, if I, we go down here, let's look at that. So, if I, uh, this is where it gets difficult for the uh, difficult for the Allied Seventh uh, Division guys. If they hit turret front or hull front or turret front here or hull front here, too bad, buddy. They're, uh, they, are, they, are, they are not going to penetrate unless they're at point blank range and you roll really well on the variable to hit dice. You're going to need to pick up uh, one or two to make, to make the connection, if you know what I mean. But certainly not here. So that means that these are somewhat less effective. They're the most plentiful of the units on the board for the Allies. So the Allies are going to have to work out how to get the Wolverines and the Shermans, the Fireflies, in a position to fire without getting fired at. Otherwise, it's going to be a bit of a bloodbath for the uh, for the for the for the Allies and those German those hefty German uh, Panzer IVs are going to. Have Adam. Uh, the flip side of all that is the Stugs don't. The Stugs can probably, can probably be taken out by the by the Cromwells, but uh, and they look very very similar to the Wolverine. In fact, so that that'll be equivalent. So the so you know maneuver is going to be important for the Allies here, and I think the the thing that's going to matter for the uh, Germans is they're going to want to get into some decent positions, hunker down, try and wear down those Cromwells when they can, pick on them. If they get early opportunities to fire at the Fireflies and knock those out sooner rather than later, that will uh, put them in good stead. But these locations here look pretty juicy. Uh, staging to make that rush in this 20-turn scenario up into this rough terrain here which will be highly valuable in terms of uh, deflecting uh, uh, terrain benefits for deflecting shots. And of course, there's some nice uh, shooting terrain up here as well. I don't think that'll block. That might be equivalent level. Or maybe it will block. I'll have to check the height of that uh, particular type, tree type. And we'll go out right from there. So that's kind, of, that's kind of the scenario. And I thought uh, that might be interesting to have a look at how this will all come together. It's a rather big... Uh, armored uh, scenario, no infantry, no air, no artillery. It's just a tank fest. I, I don't really know how many uh, tanks were available in Kampfgruppe Keller, but it would seem there were a lot 
in this at this particular point in June 1944. So we'll uh, start playing tonight, and we'll do some posting tomorrow as part of the June uh, June 6th celebration or commemoration of uh, D-Day. All the best. <laughs>